everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. I am so excited to preview my newest set coming out from Gina K Designs in just a couple days, April 6th at 7 o'clock on Stamp TV. This is Stately Flowers 11. I am so excited about this set. I know a lot of you have been following this series now for years, waiting to get all of the flowers or maybe the particular one from your own state. But as you'll notice, I have added a lot of extra elements to these final sets that you can carry back through to the very first sets. This one has a postage theme. I am so excited about it. First of all, I just want to point out the different flowers that we've got in this one. We've got the mock orange, the Indian paintbrush, which Gina showed in her peak, and we're going to be coloring that today, and then the seago lily. This was a new flower to me. It's so beautiful. So in this particular set, we've got Wyoming, Idaho, and Utah represented. But I love this postage stamp border. I'm going to show you a simple way to use that today. But I found once I got my stamps and just really started playing with it, about 10 different orientations that you can create, whether you are doubling them up or changing the rotation, that make really, really cool effects and layouts on your cards. So that that's going to be coming up in future videos. I'm hoping it's going to blow your mind. But to go along with this postage border, <clears throat> We've also got the canceled postage stamp, and there's an open space inside this happy mail. I, I can't wait to put this on all of my envelopes here on out. But you can also add in the Gina K Designs, the Love, the USA, and then this little hand stamped, and that's going to be perfect for the back of your card. So really, really thought a lot about how to make this the best that it could possibly be. And then lots of little other tiny elements that you can play around with putting inside of that. And then a butterfly, and that's just going to enhance and accent all of your floral cards. So for today's card, we're just doing a simple two-layer card. The products that you're going to need, in addition to Stately Flowers 11, just a few things. We're going to be using the Memento Tuxedo Black for our stamping. And then I've got just some Spectrum Noir markers, pretty simple colors for today. I've got the FL1 and the DR3 for the petals. I have got the CG2 and the DG3 for the leaves. I'm using the OR1 and the EB6 on the butterfly and then pulling in some of these reds and corals. And then finally the GG3 for doing my shadows. We're going to pop up the adhesive on this card today. So I've got just some um, adhesive for the layer and then some scissors for cutting it out and for my foam. And then for the cardstock, I have got a mat of the Gina K Pure Luxury Layering Weight White. This is four by five and a quarter. And then you'll just need a red card base, A2 size. This is a top fold one, but you could also do side fold. This one measures four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half. I did that with my score buddy. And then I have just a little scrap of paper that I'm doing for that popped up butterfly. If you don't want to cut it out, then just have a mask on hand that you can mask the butterfly over that border. Okay, the final thing that I want to show you, I just got this in the mail a couple days ago. This is the new Gina K Designs 3 by quarter, 4 inch block. Um, and this is a perfect size for the postage stamp. It's also going to fit that seed packet label stamp that I put in Stately Flowers 10. And then all of the flowers in my sets will fit this. So thing I really love about this block, I have some longer and shorter ones. Obviously this is gonna be heavier and this is not gonna quite fit the images. This round block that I have with the finger grips, this works for most images, but I find so often there's just a little portion that goes off. So this size is really kind of perfect for all of those. And I love the edge on this. Instead of just a bevel at the top, if you can see it goes in and out like that, perfect for your fingers to go and it doesn't feel like it's about to slip and the, the soft round corners feel really good on your fingers. So let's begin by stamping out our images and then we'll get to coloring. So I'm going to use the memento and I'm going to use postage border. So I'm going to put this on first for my framing and this would look really pretty without the border but I'm just going to be using this on everything. I used it, I think, with every single set that we are releasing, and they all turned out fabulous. And I had a lot of fun, kind of fun ideas, not, not making it a postage-themed card, but ways that you can use this wavy edge. So I know you're going to love it. Got a lot of staining on it already because I've used it so much. And it's a really, really delicate line. So what I'm going to do here 
I'm going to find the middle and then I'm going to shift up just a little bit so that I can put my greeting below it. You could put it inside of the label too, but I want to go underneath. So just a little bit above, lay that down and press all over and pick it up. That's sweet. Okay, now I want to go ahead and place the flower in. So I'm going to put it slightly in the left hand corner there to make some room for the butterfly and the canceled post. Put that right about there. You can center it if you want, but I kind of like things offset. And now we're going to do that postage. And really, you could add this to almost any image or any card and instantly the weathering on the stamped canceled postage is going to instantly give it kind of a vintage look. So I'm really excited about having that just kind of as an embellishment or a last minute accent when your card just needs that extra little something. So you will see where it's a little bit worn here that is intentional. It's not the stamp skipping. I think on this one, the first one that I did... I put hand stamped, I'm going to use the love here. So you can grab a smaller block if you need to. I'm just going to go ahead and use this large one. I'll clean it later, so I'm just going to pop that in the middle. Okay. And then let's do our greeting below it. So I forgot to mention, but you may have noticed when I was walking you through, you've got a lot of themed greetings to go with that postal theme. So for instance, first class, forever, like a forever stamp. These things work really well for cards. Okay. So I'm just going to do first class and then friend. I can't wait to see all the different things that the team came up with for this set, if we had any of the same ideas. I know they're gonna surprise me though. That's always one of my favorite parts of the party in addition to getting to chat with all of the fans. Skip that corner there a little bit of the F. Okay. All right, and then last, let's do our butterfly real quick on that scrap and then I can just close up the pad. And if you looked at the peaks, some of the peaks online, Chris Dayton, she shared a card, just a little peak of a card that she made with the butterfly and pointed out that it is symmetrical. So you can stamp out two of these or stamp out one on the back side of this after you are finished, which I might do. Um, you'd have to color it twice, but that's great because you can really, really make these 3D embellishments work on both sides for whatever direction you're viewing. All right, so let's get started coloring this. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin by just filling in the main color on these petals. And honestly, I can't remember if I used OR3 or this FL1. I was looking at the chart, I'd already put them all away. I couldn't decide, but you just wanna pick just a real bright coral or watermelon color if you want it to be the color that these naturally are. Blue Bonnet is the Texas state flower where I live, but we get a ton of Indian blankets too, and it just looks like a field of fire. It's so gorgeous. So just some kind of coral or watermelon color from your collection if you don't have either of those colors or a corresponding Copic. And I'm gonna leave just a few areas for the green Towards the bottom, they kind of fade out to green. These little anthers are going to get just a touch of that. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put in my darker red. And you can add more shades if you want, certainly. But I always just like to do a more simple coloring for the first video, just to give you all an idea of how easy it is to color with all these contour lines that are built in. Okay. All right, now let's use our DR3 
And I'm just going to go on the underside of each of these petals and then where it's going to be casting shadows from one petal to another. Just inside these little folds. And you'll see just wherever you see those lines that's pointing to where I need to hit it with a darker shade. And then I'm also, after I do my stem and leaves, I'm just going to hit it a little bit again with that red. The closer you look at flowers, you'll start to notice that they have little bits of red and pink in the green and just adding the little bit, littlest bit to your coloring, even if you can barely see it, is really going to add a lot to your cards. Okay, so now I'm going to take this lighter green. So I'm just going to fill that in. So I'm just going to kind of trace up into some of my pinker petals. And then I'm going to do some tip to tip coloring and I'm going to put stuff up in here. I think I had more of it in my original card. The green. It's going to come out different every time you color it. So, okay, now I'm going to take this DG3 and I'm just going to brush on just a little darker green down below. And so this is going to add some shading and it's also going to give it a little bit of texture. And then I want to go back with my first FL1 and I'm just going to do just a second coat in here. to deepen that and then if you want to do a little tip to tip coloring pick up just a little bit of the red where you want to just blend that a little bit more so you don't have a hard edge the harder the edge though the more contrast you're going to have it's just going to make your light really look like it's all that much brighter so i hope you don't always feel like you have to blend 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 can really be striking the contrast. Okay, and then I'm just going to put in just a little hint of it. To those leaves. Okay, and now let's color our butterfly and then I'll add that shadow. So I'm going to do the OR1 on the wings. And then I'm going to take this brown and just do this kind of outline around the edge. And typically, you know, I like to look at Google images for different color combinations, but sometimes it's fun just to start coloring and making it up. I put in a little bit of this here. I love to bring in a little bit of the color of my flowers and my butterflies. I'm going to put a little bit of this in the middle. And then I'm going to use some tip to tip to blend that out. So I'm going to take the OR1, the lighter color, And just blend on some of that FL1. And then let's just put just a dab of red in the center. Really make that middle part stand out. Just 
going back just a little bit. Okay. All right, now let's trace our flower. So I'm gonna go just on the underside and I'm gonna go off to the right today. I usually go off to the left. I picked a slightly darker shade than I normally do for my shadow. Again, I just really wanted a lot of contrast here. So under there, down here. Okay. Now let's cut this out and then we'll pop it up and we'll be finished. We're ready to layer it onto our card. I have some really fun surprises too, kind of in the way of this large postage label for future sets. So I really appreciate your patience, those of you who've been waiting for your flower. But I think, I mean, this is gonna be, if you've been collecting these, this is gonna be one of your favorite sets for sure. And I can't wait to see what everybody did with the canceled postage. I've already seen a few peeks and I just can't stop using that stamp. Okay, so now I'm going to just fold it in half this way, and then I like to kind of curl it with my fingers this way. So if you want, you can stamp on the back side. Oh, gosh, it's almost already colored for me because of it gone through. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of foam adhesive, and I like to put that just right on the body there. And then layer that right on. piece I used is not that sticky. I'm going to grab a different piece when I am done with this card. Okay, so we're going to just do a little bit of adhesive at the corners and the middle, and it's done. Let me show you my original card. So what I did on this one, I was experimenting with that border, and here I stamped it twice, and I just love that offset look. Something about it just kind of makes me think of quilting and fabric pieces. So anyway, I love both of these layouts, but they're both very simple to do, quick cards that you can get done, send to your friend. Please let me know which one you like better, the A or the B, and join us for our Stamp TV party on Stamp TV, our new release with all of our design team and our uh, stamping friends, 7 Central on Thursday night, April 6th, and the store will be open for business with all of our new purchases for all of our new stamps. Thanks for joining me today, and thank you for watching. God bless.